Sure. Uh, gluten sensitivity uh, will occur for, for anyone who eats the same food day in and day out. Eventually, you'll become sensitized to that. If we become severely sensitized, you can develop anaphylaxis and die acutely. More commonly, you simply rev up inflammation molecules, which then begin to attack other parts of your body, your joints, your skin, your brain. And uh, people who have gluten sensitivity have symptoms for years, decades. Uh, and finally, uh, some physician says, I wonder if they have gluten sensitivity, and we test them. And we realize that, yes, the problem is gluten sensitive. Uh, the person goes on a gluten-free diet, and uh, all of these vague, funny symptoms go away. We have cases where people have had what looked like uh, ALS, looked like bipolar, schizophrenia, uh, MS, um, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, uh, thyroid disease. And someone found, checked them for gluten sensitivity, person well on a gluten-free diet had resolution of their symptoms, including devastatingly abnormal MRIs. So my advice, anyone who has a chronic health problem, give yourself a month off of gluten and dairy uh, and peanuts and eggs. Very carefully, you have to be meticulous that month. At the end of the month, decide how you feel. And then spend one day trying one of those foods that I said not to, not, and see how you feel. Uh, because unfortunately the blood tests are all imperfect. The only uh, absolutely clear way of knowing are you food sensitive is to do an elimination diet, which is a huge amount of chore. I will talk more about that in the October celiac uh, lecture. But food sensitivity certainly can drive neurological problems and psychological problems. Next. So, uh, just a few suggestions. Uh, eating this way is certainly more costly, but being healthy saves you a lot of money in the long run. So, uh, I've listed some suggestions there. Instead of eating out, think, you, uh, think about carrying your lunch. Uh, instead of having your uh, fancy Starbucks food, uh, why don't you buy uh, a bunch of kale or collards? Instead of uh, those fancy coffees, uh, get some green tea. Instead of gluten grains, uh, get rice, oats. And energy drinks, drink green tea and mix it with juice. Next, please. Uh, supplements versus food, I've already covered that. Food is always a better deal. Next. OK, so uh, keep going. We're going to be running out of time here. OK, neurodegenerative diseases uh, certainly uh, can be influenced greatly by diet. Uh, and we've seen this uh, Parkinson's, dementia, uh, and MS will be influenced uh, by eating the proper building blocks. Uh, psychiatric symptoms uh, should be reduced. Uh, learning disabilities, depression, aggression, violence, in several studies have shown that if you add fish oil, B-complex, multivites, mags, and polyphenols, symptoms reduce. And then if you actually eat right, you'll do much, much better. Next. OK. Diet matters. You can, do, you can help yourself with supplements some, but the food you eat is so important. Next. All right. Sort of a big summary of the things to do. Work on your diet. Get rid of the grains. Focus on greens. Focus on vegetables. The uh, summary that I have, and this is what I tell my folks in the VA. So these are big strapping ex-Marines I'm talking to. Uh, nine cups of uh, vegetables, non-starchy vegetables. I went three cups of green plus sulfur. Three cups of brilliant colors for the antioxidants, and preferably three different colors. Three more non-starchy fruits and vegetables of their choice. Now, if you're female, you can probably just work with six instead of nine. And then have a protein source of your choice. If you're still hungry and you've done a lot of work, yes, go ahead and eat some carbs. 
But if you're not doing physical work, you need to have all of your calories be loaded with micronutrients. If you're eating calories that don't have much nutrition in them, such as white flour, white potatoes, you're making yourself starve because your brain is very good at recognizing, did I have all the nutrients I needed today? And if I didn't, I'm going to continue to be hungry. And so if I've eaten all of the micronutrients that I needed, then my brain asks the next question is, have you done enough work, so much work that you're using up your cells to get the work done? And if the answer is no, then I'm not hungry. If the answer is yes, I'm still hungry. So if, I, if I've been bailing hay all day, I probably would have to eat 15 cups of fruits and vegetables before I wasn't hungry. But if I'm not bailing hay, you know, my green leaves, bright colored vegetables and fruit and protein, and then I'm, I'm full. I'm not hungry. It'd be very difficult to eat, eat beyond that. But if I was eating empty calories, my brain is still hungry and I can keep eating. And my body will keep, my brain will keep telling me to up the number of calories I can eat every day because it's starving. 